Ladies and gentlemen, 20 years is a long time in our rapidly developing world. Over the past 20 years, the South Caucasus has experienced a number of shocks, which individually and <coughs> collectively have made it impossible for the region to become a full and independent entity. The South Caucasus is only really a geographically relevant definition, as internal integration has failed to take off. During this period, regional countries have chosen and pursued their individual paths path for development. Each of three South Caucasus republics shapes its foreign policy and solves its problem in its own way. Having said this, the respective decisions regarding foreign policy direction have been largely shaped by the interests of external players. The United States appeared in the region at the collapse of the Soviet Union and filled the power vacuum left by the dissolution of the empire. Over 20 years, the priorities for the United States in the region have also changed. First, the United States viewed the South Caucasus countries as a post-Soviet space, then as key link in the alternative energy supply chain to Europe and the rest of the world. 2000s saw the threat of global terrorism take precedence and brought the countries together in the anti-terror coalition. And in recent years, the region's proximity to Iran has been an important focus. One thing is clear, due to the internal divisions within the region, the United States has put forward different priorities for each country in the South Caucasus. Azerbaijan has demonstrated full commitment to ensuring regional security in cooperation with the United States. Together with leading multinational companies, Azerbaijan has implemented a number of geoeconomic projects. For example, the Baku Tbilisi Jehan oil pipeline, the Baku Tbilisi Erzurum gas pipeline, which have contributed to the continued development of Azerbaijan and Georgia. In accordance with national interests, our country is a partner of the United States in several key areas. Azerbaijan is an active ally in the anti-terror coalition. Since the start of the war, tens of thousands of military flights to Afghanistan have passed through Azerbaijani airspace. The crashing of an Azerbaijani cargo plane headed for the US-led NATO mission in Afghanistan on 5 July 2010 served as a reminder of Azerbaijan's contribution, not only in terms of its troops on the ground, but also its civilian presence through ground transportation and airspace. Furthermore, in recent years, the nature of Azerbaijan's contribution to Afghanistan has gradually changed. Azerbaijan has attempted to contribute to the stabilization of Afghanistan in other ways, such as education, training Afghan civil servants, expanding its anti-terrorism measures and others. Indeed, terrorism poses a threat to the national security of Azerbaijan because we have been subjected to attacks by Armenian forces and we know the price of the risk. Azerbaijan provides for the energy security of America's closest allies, such as Israel, Georgia, Turkey, Italy, and others. Azerbaijan is seeking to play an active role in the formation of the Southern Energy Corridor. Azerbaijan serves as an example of an effective secular government in a Muslim country for other US allies. In addition, the pragmatic relationships with the United States can certainly be used as a model for relations with the Turkish states in Central Asia. Azerbaijan's growing economic power extends to the Black Sea Basin. Azerbaijan is an active investor in virtually all countries of the Black Sea. In the short term, our country's investments in the region will exceed the mark of $15 billion, which will have a positive impact on the economic situation of the regional countries. The recent statements by the President of Azerbaijan 
on doubling the country's GDP over the next 10 years, and the vision for Azerbaijan's development in the decades ahead in view of regional and global trends demonstrates the country's ambitions. Over this time, Azerbaijan has asserted itself as a responsible and reliable partner. All this is a product of geoeconomic projects, some of which have been supported by the United States. In this context, the United States should focus on its interests in establishing long-term stability and security in the region. The biggest threat to the security of all three countries of the region is posed by unresolved conflicts. The separatism in Abkhazia and South Ossetia, along with the Armenian occupation of Nagorno-Karabakh, have posed obstacles to the integration of the region and the creation of a secure image for the South Caucasus. Azerbaijan has agreed to the co-chairmanship of the United States, Russia, and France in the OCG Minsk Group, as these countries are the most powerful and influential countries in the world and are all permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. Azerbaijan still hopes that these three co-chairs countries will respect their own decisions on the four UN Security Council resolutions. All three countries have opportunities to influence the aggressor country, but unfortunately, none of them is using this leverage. The vote of Azerbaijan resolutions at the United Nations General Assembly demonstrated how vulnerable the UN itself is in the process of conflict resolution. It's unclear how the leaders of the three co-chair countries can discuss improving efficiency of the world's most uh, respected organization, but on the other hand, take no specific steps to implement the four resolutions on the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. It sometimes seems that Armenia's maximalist approach does not encounter any condemnation while Azerbaijan's position of compromise is itself presented as maximalist, and we are the ones required to make further concessions. Also disappointing is the widespread use of balance between the party parties. However, balance does not always equate to objectivity. Armenian aggression and occupation of Azerbaijani lands is a fact that does not require discussion. It's impossible to ask the US ambassador at each meeting whether the United States recognizes the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan or whether the United States ambassador recognizes Nagorno-Karabakh as the part of Azerbaijan. This is a fact for which there is no burden to prove. It's worrying that regional security and U.S. policy depend on small lobbying groups in the United States. These groups pose a real risk to the full and effective implementation of U.S. policies in the region. This should not be taken as a norm because it damages the interests of the United States. This country had no ambassador to Azerbaijan for more than one year due to the activity of the Armenian lobby. For the same reason, U.S. didn't officially support the baku tbilisi cars railway project, a transport road linking Asia and Europe and crossing the countries that are strategic partners and allies of the United States. Azerbaijan, for its part, stands for the peaceful settlement of the Azer Armenian, Azerbaijan and Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Over 20 years, despite this complex conflict, we have continued to implement regional projects and have continued to contribute the new architecture for the region's economic development. As noted, Azerbaijan plays an important role in ensuring the sustainable development of a number of neighboring countries and in creating a vision of, vision, a vision of the future. But neighboring Armenia does not share this commitment and remains under seek due of its aggressive policies and regressive vision. The current state of the region is unsustainable. It's impossible 
to create favorable conditions for a secure future without influence and perhaps even pressure from outside. In our view, the United States is not active in this area. Statements that the resolution of the conflict depends on the free will of the parties are irresponsible. What free will can we speak of when the aggressive state of Armenia puts forward unreasonable demands and tries to maintain the status quo at all costs? The United States, as the most powerful country in the world, can and should play a responsible role in the settlement process. United States has provided more than $2 billion in assistance to Armenia over the past 20 years. These funds will never be returned to American taxpayers. But what is the benefit for the United States? Aside from the cultural center of Gafischan in Yerevan, what opportunities for influence does the United States have in Armenia? Unfortunately, Armenia is losing its grip on its independence. This is recognized by the United States too, but the assistance to Armenia in this context is completely one-sided. Initiated and supported by the United States, the Armenian-Turkish normalization is an example of short-sighted uh, policy in the South Caucasus. The desire to increase influence in Armenia has resulted in complete failure and the possible loss of the positive image of the United States in Azerbaijan. Today, one thing is clear. The opening of the border is impossible without the liberation of the Armenian occupied territories. Thus, we conclude that over 20 years, the United States policy in the region has been instrumental and strengthening the independence of Azerbaijan and Georgia and in the regional security process. However, due to the influence of the Armenian lobby, the United States cannot take an active part in the object resolution of the biggest threat to the security in the South Caucasus, the settlement of the Armenian-Azerbaijan and Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Azerbaijan demonstrates a constructive position by participating in peace talks and patiently waiting for the work of the OCG Minsk Group. The President of Azerbaijan has always emphasized the provision for the broad autonomy of the population of the Nagorno-Karabakh region within Azerbaijan. The Azerbaijanis and the Armenians of political right <coughs> of Nagorno-Karabakh can live together in physical security and enjoy political rights and economic development free from threats to their ethnic identity. The beginning of a peace process advocated by Azerbaijan at this stage will create a new picture of the re region. After the liberation of the occupied territories, the Armenian-Azerbaijani and the Armenian-Turkish border will be opened, and Armenia will be able to enjoy open borders, which promises a short-term 20% economic growth spurt. The status of Nagorno-Karabakh as part of Azerbaijan can be discussed for many years because the new picture of the region will create a new reality and strengthen the independence of Armenia. Under the circumstances, does the resolution of the conflict does pose a threat to US interests in the region? On the contrary, it will create conditions for the safe and successful development of the region where all countries will enjoy partnership relations with the United States. In conclusion, I would like to thank our speakers and guests for accepting our invitation to participate in the conference. Thank you.